JLB back with a brand new installment of Animated Television History Tour. And today, we're going to be talking about a show that's based around one of the... I do mean one of... The oldest hero in the world of newspaper comics. I'm not talking about regular comic books, I'm talking about the Sunday pages. This character he goes by the name of Tracy. Dick Tracy. Now, for those of you who are not quite familiar with Dick Tracy, well, I'm not too familiar with him either, so you and I are in the same boat. However, I can say some of the brief things about him. He was a crime-fighting uh, comic strip character back in the 1920s. When the Sunday Pages came around, chances are there was a Dick Tracy newspaper strip on there as well. Now, he came around at the in the 20s, during the gangster era, Prohibition, before the Great Depression, mind you. But it was only about 40 years later, I believe, 40 years later, when Dick Tracy would actually make a comeback. But not in the form of a new series of comics in the form of a very limited animated TV series called The Dick Tracy Show. This show ran for one entire year, from January 1st, 1961 to January 1st of 1962. Now, here's the one thing that kind of disappoints me about the show. We don't really get to see Dick Tracy in action that much. Instead, he employs a series of cartoonish... Flatfoots, as a detective way of saying, uh, extra hands to help him fight the crime of the week. He contacted them via his famous two-way wrist radio watch. And they, there were only about four of them. There was Jiu-Jitsu, a parody of Charlie Chan and Mr. Moto. A very intelligent detective who fought with martial arts techniques. And he would repeatedly apologize to his victims as he battered them about. Next we got Hemlock Holmes, a loud, bumbling, cockney British, British bulldog named in honor of Sherlock Holmes. Oh, and uh, Jiu-Jitsu was voiced by... I don't know who he was voiced by, but Hemlock was voiced by Jerry Hosner, and he was backed up by his own police squad called the Retouchables, named after the Untouchables. But they looked and behaved more like the Keystone Cops of the serials way back in the 20s. Then you got Hippo Calorie, a parody of Andy Devine, voiced by Uncle Johnny Coons. He was a red-headed street cop with a bit of a problem with his weight and a penchant for stealing apples from an outdoor fruit stand. And finally got Manuel Tijuana Guadalajara Tampico Gogo Gomez Jr. He's basically a human version of Speedy Gonzales. He was voiced by Mel Blanc, but Paul Fries did do his voice for most of the series. And unfortunately, almost all the characters are basic stereotypes. Don't know if that will set well with the modern audiences today, but that's just people's opinions. Um, Everett Sloan voicing Tracy, and Mel Blanc, Paul Fries, and Benny Rubin voicing his four, four extra hands. Some of these characters, some of these people would also play the villains. Name, namely, uh, the other three men I mentioned. These villains all came from the comics. You got Flat Top, BB Eyes, Prune Face, Itchy, Stooge Viler, Mumbles, the Brow and Oodle, the Brow Oodles, the Mole, and Sketch Paris. They all of them worked in a pair, all, all of them. 
but there was one character who was created specifically for the show, but he only appeared in about two episodes. A fellow named Cheater Gunsmoke, a Texas-sounding cigar smoker with a literal cloud of smoke obscuring his entire face and head. Now, out of all the villains in the cartoon, Stooge ended up being the first to appear in the comic strip. And Oodles appeared last, about six years before the show was aired in 1955. Now, a regular gang that was featured in several episodes of the show was when one of Tracy's detectives found themselves in sudden danger. Like, say, there was a bullet speeding towards them, or they were about to fall off a cliff. The typical stuff. They would shout for a pause in the action. That is to say, everything would stop. Right then and there. And he would call in Dick Tracy for further instructions. It would repeat through several episodes all the way up until when the show was cancelled on January 1st, 1962. But honestly... Well, I'll just save my thoughts for later. Now, there was a Mr. Magoo crossover planned. It was released as... Dick Tracy and the Mob, in which Mr. Magoo would end up meeting one of uh, Dick, Tr Dick Tracy's hands. I haven't really seen it myself. But, in all honesty, I don't really think this show is all that great. The animation is limited by the standards of the 60s, and we don't really get to see Dick Tracy in action. I mean, the show's named after him, but... We don't really get to see the namesake detective out on a case. But if you're interested in seeing who Dick Tracy is and what he's all about, you either go with this or the Dick Tracy movie that was released in 1990. Either way, Dick Tracy is a character that can be easily forgotten, and this show could be a reason why. Anyway, that wraps up another episode. Thanks a whole bunch for joining me here today. And next on, on my list of shows to feature here on this show, we take a look at, let's see, um... Ah, who am I kidding? Why am I even trying to find out which show we're talking about? Just join me next time, and you'll see why. I'll leave it a surprise. Until then, see you later.